So today I'm reviewing one of my favorite laptops that I've ever used. I'm actually reviewing the Snapdragon X Elite version of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. And this laptop has a lot of things that are very exciting, like the battery life, and we're also getting a gorgeous screen. But there's also a few compromises we have to talk about. Even though there's a ton of excitement about these ARM laptops, and it is very justified despite what some people say, I will still admit that we do still have some things we need to improve on with these laptops. So with all that being said, let's get right into it and let's review the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. So I do remember looking back whenever Apple released their M1 processor, whenever they really moved over to ARM and they put a lot of pressure on developers to really get things going. And I'm seeing actually a very similar trend here. Not everything is perfect with this laptop and there are still some software hiccups that we do need to move past. But if we can give this laptop a little bit of time to mature, I am telling you there is so much to like, not only with this laptop, just with the hardware, but also with the Snapdragon X Elite processor. There's a lot of promising things we need to talk about with that processor and how it performs and all of that. First off though, I do wanna talk about the price and all of the competition we're seeing right now with these ARM laptops because the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, I do understand it does have a little bit of a higher retail price. So it does retail at $1,350. So even though the retail price is a little bit high, we do have to talk about sales because right now you could buy this laptop. The day I'm recording this video, it's down to $899. Of course, those prices are going to change. So I'm seeing it on sale pretty much all of the time. It's on sale very, very frequently. So I would say $999 is really the price that we should be concerned about because that's what I'm seeing it for almost every single week. And if you look at other devices around $999, especially ARM laptops, you're gonna find something like the Surface Laptop 7 that does have a wonderful Snapdragon X Plus processor, but it doesn't have the X Elite. It also has less storage because this model right here, this Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, it does have 512 gigabytes of storage, 16 gigs of RAM, and a gorgeous AMOLED display. And if you look at the Surface Laptop 7, it does not go on sale very often, and it does not have an AMOLED display. Or if you do get one of those higher end devices with the Snapdragon X Elite processors, well, those Surface Laptop 7 they are gonna cost more than the Samsung. If you look at something else like the HP Omnibook, that's another device that's competing with this pretty hard. Well, that device I've seen on sale around $899 as well, and that laptop does have one terabyte of storage, but it doesn't have an AMOLED display, and it also has, well, a very poor display to begin with. So every device out there, especially at this price point, whenever we factor in all of the sales that are actually happening, you have to realize all of these devices have compromises. Some devices are more upgradable. Some devices have more storage. Some have less. Some have better screens like this, and some are thinner and lighter because this device is very thin and light. And some devices are gonna have a little more weight, but maybe they're gonna have a little more travel on their keyboards, right? So whenever we factor all of those things in, I still think at $999 or even $899, depending on where you find this laptop on sale, I will say this laptop is one of the best values if you look at price compared to all of the other Snapdragon X Elite devices out there, even compared to the Snapdragon X Plus devices. Now, if we go to the design, you're gonna see, again, some really awesome things you're gonna love and some slight compromises. So I would say for a $1,000 laptop, this is very, very well built. It does feel extremely premium. It's also very, very lightweight, I will say that. Because this device is a little bit thinner, you will also have a little more heat on this compared to some of those other devices. Keep that in mind because if you have such a thin chassis, I don't really think it's getting that much warmer than a lot of these other devices. I just think it's so much thinner that you could actually feel the heat a little more. The fans are not very loud regardless because I don't think it's much hotter than those other devices, but again, it's so darn thin. But I will say the thinness and the lightness, it can be a pro and a con. 
because you see here, you get this little dip here in the frame and you have a very, very light and thin laptop. Holy smokes, this is one of the lightest laptops I've ever used. So yeah, it's gonna be light, but you're not going to get a lot of key travel on the keys. And one reason why is because they did sacrifice that little bit of extra depth that they maybe could have given you for that travel. So if you're someone who wants a lighter laptop and you love lighter laptops, you're going to absolutely love this. It is more than good enough for me. It won't be as good as the Surface Laptop 7 or the HP Omnibook as far as key travel, but I do still think it's very, very close. It's just a step down and it's still gonna be fairly nice. Now the trackpad or the touchpad, it is not going to be haptic. And I know some of you might want a haptic touchpad for this price. You do not get a haptic touchpad. The other thing, if you're looking at the design, whenever you do take off the back plate, and I am not going to do that, but you would find that the storage is not upgradable because it's not an NVMe SSD. It's actually using some similar phone storage that they use for other phones. So that is a good thing maybe as far as efficiency, but whenever it comes down to actual speeds and whenever it comes down to, well, upgradability, you're going to have less upgradability here, sadly, with no SSD upgradability, no RAM upgradability, none of that. And you get some decent ports, not the best. You don't get a USB-A port, but if you look at this side, you get two USB-C ports, you get a HDMI port and a headphone jack. I really like that we do get HDMI, that's very important to me. USB-C is the way of the future and you can always get a little bit of a dongle if you wanna have a few extra ports added somehow. So I do have some links in the description if you wanna add some accessories. I do have some accessories that helped me. Just a couple of cheap adapters and things can help you out if you do have some other devices you wanna to connect to this. Now I do also wanna mention that the speaker are on the bottom of this laptop. You will hear them fairly well whenever you are actually using them, but they're not great. They're not quite as good as some of the more premium laptops, but the speakers are still better in my opinion than a lot of the five or $600 laptops out there. And the webcam is also pretty decent. A lot of people might buy a laptop like this to do work on Zoom or other things, and Zoom is compatible with ARM, and you do get a good result overall. Not perfect, but I do enjoy the camera here. Now the star of the show for this laptop is really going to be the display. The colors are amazing. We get an AMOLED panel with plenty of brightness. It's around 500 nits of brightness, give or take. And we do get 120 hertz here, so everything looks great, it looks smooth. We also have HDR on the display if you do want that. So it's a really good looking display for entertainment, for content. This is not a 360 device though. Almost all of these Snapdragon laptops, they do have touchscreen and this does have touchscreen, which is great, especially with 120 Hertz. If you are scrolling around, it's really nice to have that touchscreen, but we do not get a 360 device. And I think that's actually good because it does give us a little more stability as far as the hinge and everything. I did not notice any significant screen wobble and I've seen some really bad screen wobble before, but I was not noticing anything like that on this device. So again, compared to the competition, I would say this is gonna have a better display than the Surface Laptop and the performance is phenomenal. Now that's what we really need to talk about is how do these ARM processors perform? Because if you're out there, I know I'm an Android channel, right? But we don't have a lot of Android devices out here that are actually capable of heavy video editing with DaVinci Resolve and things like that. So getting an ARM device that has that same type of efficiency as a smartphone where you don't really need heavy fans, but also getting a lot of power that we don't typically get. If we just look at benchmarks, this device is going to perform extremely well. And I would argue it's gonna be competing with a lot of thicker, Intel laptops that are out there and a lot of thicker AMD laptops that yeah, they're gonna push things but a lot of the laptops I'm seeing around seven, eight, nine hundred dollars most of them have U-series processors. And if you get something like an H-series processor, or something like that, this is gonna perform better than even most of those. And it's gonna perform very similarly to a lot of the M3 devices that are out there or the Apple M2 devices. So to get that type of power in this 
device is amazing. Now I would say the GPU is like a step down from those Intel devices, like it's a step down from Intel Arc, but it's still gonna be very good overall for people who need a onboard GPU. But whenever you're looking at actual day-to-day -day performance for your average user, it's gonna be great depending on the program. So there's a lot of hype out there really hyping up Snapdragon, and there's some people that are saying Snapdragon's awful. And you have to understand, it's amazing and it really is revolutionary for the space of laptops and smartphones and everything like that. But there are still some compromises if you're using a Snapdragon device on Windows. So as of today, they don't have every program optimized for ARM processors. Because the processor that this is running, well, there haven't been a lot of those processors running on Windows devices. They've maybe had one or two in the past, but lately, especially with the latest push, we're now seeing 20 or 25, I don't even know how many laptops just released with these processors. But now that we're seeing all of these processors going into the wild, we're actually seeing a lot of pressure go on developers to make sure their apps are optimized. So there are a lot of apps that are optimized to work very quickly on this. And if you find those apps that are optimized, you're going to get, again, arguably better performance than some Apple devices out there like M2 devices. And you will get, I would say, better performance than Intel or AMD. And you're gonna get it in a thinner body. The problem is some apps aren't optimized yet. If you're looking at, let's say, Vegas Pro, that's a video editor that I was using off and on, and Vegas Pro is not optimized yet. DaVinci Resolve is optimized, so that's great. When it comes to things like gaming, some games aren't optimized. But even if an app isn't optimized, there is something called emulation, which does still allow it to run on the computer. So my point is, generally speaking, about 95% of the programs that you're gonna wanna run on this laptop will work. I would say maybe only 50% as of today, and I am just throwing out random numbers here, maybe 50% are optimized to work on this laptop. And the other 50% are gonna be emulated. So you're still gonna see some hiccups. You might take a 10 or 15 or 20% performance hit if you do start emulating something. But because this laptop has such a good processor in it, it's gonna be able to handle that no problem anyway for almost any app. But if you are emulating, maybe it will drain a little extra battery life. And that may bring this laptop more in line with Intel and AMD and other devices for some of you. But if you are someone who does a lot of office work, you're using Google Chrome, and maybe you're running a lot of apps that actually work with ARM, if that's you, you're gonna get great battery life on almost all of these Snapdragon laptops. And this does have a little bit of a smaller battery than some of them, but I have been getting around eight to nine hours of screen on time with this laptop. So with 120 Hertz and OLED, a lot of things draining this battery, I've still been getting pretty darn good battery life, especially with the resolution I'm dealing with, and especially since I'm using a lot of power settings that are a little higher or a little bit of higher brightness. I'm again, getting at least six to 10 hours depending on what I'm doing. So we really have to ask ourselves who this laptop is for. This is not really designed to be a gamer's laptop. It's a thin and light laptop, obviously, so it's not meant to be for gaming. But if you have a game that has anti-cheat software, then it probably will not work on this device. But if you do actually have a game like an MMO, World of Warcraft works on this, I know Lord of the Rings Online works on this, Elder Scrolls Online, they all work on this laptop. Even Diablo 2 works on this laptop. Of course, if you have super new intense games, well, those are the type of games that even if you got them to work, you'd have to have on super low settings. And then that emulation might take it a step down anyway. So the point is, I would not buy this for gaming. Gaming is a good secondary function on this laptop. I've been able to do some nice gaming, but it's not the primary focus. So if your primary focus is getting a gaming laptop that's pretty thin, you might wanna get something like a razor blade, but this is not gonna be the option you look for. But if you're wanting something that can run a lot of office applications, most of those are already optimized to work on ARM, and it's gonna work great. Even DaVinci Resolve, of course, if you are editing crazy content, you might need to make proxies or something. But if you're looking at even video editing, you can do that on this laptop with 16 gigs of RAM. I'm not really gonna talk about all the AI stuff or anything like that. I'm just gonna say, that for office work, if you're wanting good laptops with thin, 
designs. If you're wanting designs that are premium and you're wanting very good devices that can do a lot of stuff with good battery but also perform super well, all of these ARM devices coming out, I would highly recommend them to you. They are not hype, they are really good, and they are recommended. I've had no issues really with software. I've just had a couple of games that don't work, but pretty much everything else I can emulate and take a little bit of a performance hit. But then when I wanna bring this out for light office work, I'm getting a great display, I'm getting very good battery life, and I'm getting a good keyboard, not great, but good, a good touchpad, not great, but good. So very good design, very light device. I absolutely love this laptop, it's tremendous. And the thing that sets this device apart, it's going to be the price. Because if you find this for $899 or $999, it really stands out from all of those other devices out there. Some of those devices have upgradable storage, but they have other issues or their price is two or $300 higher. There are pros and cons depending on what you want in a device. But if you're okay with this device not upgrading storage because you don't get upgradable storage, that might be a big red flag. No USB-A port, that might be a big red flag. You are still going to get a device with a lot of great features and a lot of things that a lot of you normal people are gonna like. Also, if you're looking at integration with a smartphone, I would say you're gonna get a great device with this laptop that works well with Android, pretty much any Windows device does. You could set it up to work with your phone, no problem. You're gonna get great battery life. You're gonna be able to hook up your phone to get automatic hotspot, assuming your carrier does work with all those things. So, so many great things here for us Android users to like, especially if we want a thinner laptop. And with software updates, I expect it to get better and better as more apps release. And for now, it's more than good enough for me and I'm still getting, I would argue, better battery life. So if you want a thin laptop that looks so beautiful, if you want a great OLED screen and all that, definitely would recommend this. Snapdragon ARM devices, I really do believe they are a big future in Windows. I don't think they're going away anytime soon. And I think they will drive down the prices of a lot of these laptops and I'm very excited about that. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you like the setup. I did try a new camera today. Please give me a like on this video and give me a sub. That would really mean a lot to my channel. This video, by the way, was edited on my Galaxy Book 4 Edge with DaVinci Resolve and trying some new stuff out, trying some new programs. So hopefully you like that. If you wanna watch any more content on my channel, I do focus a lot on Android and Samsung, Samsung tablets, and a lot of Android devices. Feel free to check some other videos. Check the links in the description if you are interested in buying this laptop. And thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. And don't forget to enjoy some content if you get a little bit of time.